Hi, everybody. Dennis Prager here. I have one more thought on the indictment of Greenpeace and other environmentalist movements by Bjorn Lomborg. The piece is up at DennisPrager.com. The number of uh, dead third world people at the hands of the environmentalist movement is uh, in the many millions. It means nothing to them. I don't think they lose a, a minute's sleep over it because the environment is uber alles. And that is how they conduct themselves. But I was thinking when I kept saying, you know, these, these wealthy folks in the West who support the uh, this, and they have no, and of course there are no ramifications. They're not going to get malaria. They're not going to die of vitamin A deficiency or more specifically their little children. Who do you think funds Greenpeace? You know who? Wealthy white people. So it's very interesting when wealthy whites support a conservative cause, it's just wealthy whites. So who, who, who needs to take them seriously? But if wealthy white, whites are the sole supporters of left-wing groups, then it's never mentioned. Who do you think supports the ACLU? The big funds, folks. Who do you think it comes from? So the, the, the dishonesty of the attack on wealthy whites is... is I. I, I I couldn't do it because there's a voice in me that always says, be honest first. First, tell the truth, then give your opinion. That voice is, is missing on the left. doesn't mean that all leftists lie. There are li liars on the right and liars on the left. Good people on the left, good people on the right, bad people on both. But the activists put their cause before truth. Yes. And I told you about the Muslim preacher. I have one line I want to read to you about the Ecuadorian election where the... We were just there, and it reinforces... I'll, I'll say something about that in a moment. The Ecuadorian version of Hugo Chavez won very big, 57% of the vote. The nearest opponent got 23 And one of his, the features of uh, his regime has been uh, to close down and sue. He uses the courts with his hand-picked judges to sue and bankrupt newspapers that criticize him. And it works. Uh, world journalist groups have condemned uh, his, uh, his administration there. He, uh, he is called, this is from the uh, Wall Street Journal, he has called Ecuador's press the following. He's called journalists mafiosas, savage beasts, human wretchedness, cavemen, dictators, swindlers, bureaucratic wheedlers, and television stations, sewers with antennas. By the way, to a certain extent, I would agree with that. I don't know if it's true in Ecuador, but I would say MTV is largely a sewer with an antenna. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the news groups that oppose him. I want to. I am going to read to you just from this whole article two, four, six, eight, nine words. Mr. Correa, that's his name, Rafael Correa a 49-year-old U.S.-educated economist. Did you catch that? There is, in America's Americans' minds, the belief that if you come to study in the United States, it's a real positive in how you will view the United States. I have now come to suspect, suspect, it means I suspect, I don't know for a fact, but I suspect that most foreign students who come to the United States to study at an American university leave with a more negative view of America and leave more leftist than they came, just like American students are more likely to leave college with a more negative view of America and more left-wing in their orientation. Most people reading this would think this guy who's so anti-U.S., 